Welcome, welcome, welcome. I bet, I bet you thought Andy is not coming anymore. He's still celebrating the 10,000 subscriber and he's gone. Well, actually, someone recently left a comment and said, Andy, take a break, have a beer, don't film anything, just do something else. So I did, I did for four days, but now <sighs> I'm back and it feels so good. Okay, let's do a video. <laughs> Okay, here I, uh, I want to show you something. This is my East Roof solar charge controller. And we go into settings and into battery. And we turn on the expert mode. And as you can see here from the battery preset up here, this is the original Victron lithium iron phosphate Leaf Epo 4 profile. It charges the battery to 56.8 volts. Why is this camera so low? Which is a 3.55 volts per cell. And they keep the absorption voltage. Okay, let me explain here. 3.55. Okay, so what Victron is doing, they charge up your battery, typical lithium iron phosphate charging curve, up to 3.55 volts and then they keep the battery on 3.55 as you can see down here absorption time two hours until they lower the voltage to 54 volts 3.375 is that correct yep that's correct that is exactly here so this time span here is two hours and you can see they have also turned off the tail current. So regardless how much energy the battery still takes, it will stay there for two hours. And then it goes into float mode and stays in float mode. And as you all know, the reason why they are doing this and pushing the battery so high is because of balancing, right? This is the time where your balancing should happen. So you should go into your BMS and set 3.55 volt as your balance start voltage and the, the current usually comes along like this and once we hit the 3.55 the current will go down very very steep and go in the curve like this depending on the absorption the battery has already done before so if you charge with a lower current it has more absorbed already if you have a high current input it takes a little bit longer to absorb then but the current goes actually uh, i would say it goes to zero at some stage here and it doesn't take too long from the tests we have done before with the uh, test battery and charging to 3.5 we could see the current is tapering off very very quickly so in here if the current is almost zero, the balancing kicks in of your BMS, discharges single cells as needed. And this makes totally sense, right? Well, with all these BMSs on the market, most of the BMSs on the market, they all have a very, very low balance current. 20 milliamps, 25, sometimes 50, 60, some have 100. And the QUCC BMS I have here has 200 milli, up to 200 milliamps. I've seen 160, I've never seen 200 so far. We've got several cells in series. We've got our BMS connected with balance leads in between. And the BMS checks the voltage of these cells. And if one of the cells is too high against the others, it starts, the BMS starts discharging this one cell and destroys the energy, right? So we now have a charging current going through all these cells of say 10 amps as an example, right? Somewhere over here. Let's say this is 10 amps. If we would balance at this state here, we've got a charge current going through the pack of 10 amps and the BMS realizes, hey, this cell here is a bit high, high voltage, yeah? and it starts balancing this one cell. But the solar charge controllers can only see the whole voltage of the whole pack and keeps charging because the other cells 
are lower in voltage than this one. So the solar charge controllers keep pushing 10 amps through your battery bank and the BMS is discharging this one cell with 0.2 amps. Well, in this case, it's a QUCC BMS, a high, a relatively high balance current of 0.2 amps, right? So what would happen? Well, these cells here getting 10 amp, 10 amp, and this one here with a high voltage would get 9.8 amps, yeah, because we are discharging with 0.2 amps. So as a result, do we actually reduce the voltage of this cell? No, we don't, because we are still charging with positive 9.8 amps. We are still pushing electrons through the cell, just not as much anymore as to the other ones. And this is why balancing does not make sense at all, as long as you have charge current going through your battery bank. So only, so only at this point, from this point of time on here, when the charge current goes to zero, or is even zero, the balancing actually makes sense. Because now we don't have any charge current going through your battery pack anymore. And if this cell is high voltage and the BMS discharges this one cell with 0.2 amps, the voltage actually here will come down. And this is basically the time Victron allows the BMS to do its job. To balance single cells and make them equal. That's why we have a two hour absorption time at 3.55 volts. So now, now the question is, why do we have to have 3.55 volts? There was a comment, I think it was from Jeremy, it's a while back, if I can find it, I'll, 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 put, it, I'll put it up here somewhere, hopefully. Um, Jeremy explained this very well and he said, guys, we shouldn't be afraid to charge our battery cells to 100% every time. So we should not be concerned about the state of charge of the battery, but the voltage to achieve that. And we know from our tests we have done in the recent past, we can charge lithium ion phosphate at a lower voltage to 100%. It just takes a bit longer, right? We just need to allow a bit of absorption. And Jeremy is absolutely right with his comment in there. The, the killer for batteries is not state of charge, it is voltage. Extreme high voltage, extreme low voltage will degrade your battery very fast. The ideal voltage for such a lithium iron phosphate battery would be 3.25 volts. If you keep the battery at this voltage, it, it will last forever. Going above this voltage, going below this voltage, degradation starts. Of course, even keeping it at 3.25 volts, you will have certain degradation because of the aging of the chemicals and everything. But going higher or lower with the voltage degrades it faster. And the higher you go or the lower you go, the higher or the faster the degradation of your cell occurs. So in here comes my problem with this. God, I need to adjust the camera every time again. So here, here, comes, the, here comes the problem with these settings from um, Victron here. I think 56.8 volt is a bit too high. Unless you haven't got time to charge your batteries and you need to charge them as fast as possible. One of my viewers had the example with the sailboat. You know, you never know what to expect the next day. So you're trying to recharge your batteries as fast as possible. Once you're out of out in sea, well, you could have, you could have a thunderstorm, you could have clouds in the next day, and then your radio, your radar, and, and nothing. You don't have enough power then. So you need to recharge your battery as fast as possible. And I I totally understand this, and this makes totally sense in these circumstances. But here in a stationary environment, we shouldn't have this this problem, uh, at least not all the time. There might be certain situations as well where you want to recharge your battery as fast as possible, but usually you've got time, right? Okay, I'm going to load the East Roof lower voltage settings again. Apply. I've just applied my settings again. So I have lowered my absorption voltage to 55.2 volts, which is 3.45. So I'm going 0.1 volt lower for the absorption. 
And down here you can see the absorption time I have set is only 10 minutes. I basically give the battery no time to absorb. I, I call it right away here. 10 minutes only. And the 10 minutes is only to trigger my smart shunt. The smart shunt has certain trigger mechanisms to recalibrate itself to 100%. So that the smart shunt knows, okay, the battery is now full. Yeah, We have reached this voltage, we have stayed there for a certain amount of time, and the current has dropped under a certain threshold. These are the three criteria for the smart shunt to recalibrate to 100%. And because I don't have the absorption time, the smart shunt never triggered correctly and it showed me always wrong values and everything. So hen hence I'm experimenting with this 10 minute window now. So I keep the battery on 3.45 volts for 10 minutes. And this is the window the smart shunt recognizes, okay, we have now reached our threshold. And then I go down to 53.6 volt, which is um, 3.35. I'm not too concerned about the 3.375 they have set, or my 3.35 volts I have set. That is that is fine. Either or is totally fine. But the 3.55 volt for two hours, I think this is too long. Okay, so what do I do now for balancing purposes? Because I don't have this delta time here to actually allow the BMS to do its job, right? I've got only 10 minutes. So I'm dropping the voltage to 3.35 and this is where my balancing starts at 3.35 and I'll show you this in my BMS here if we go into the settings and we have a look here at the middle of the balance turn on voltage, which is set to 3.351. So one millivolt above the floating voltage I've set in my charge controllers now. So how does this work now? Well, as you know, when we balance the cells, the same as up here, there is basically no current going in or out of the battery. Excuse my drawing here. If the battery is floating at 3.35 volts and you have a certain load connected, the solar charge controllers actually deliver the energy from your solar panels directly to the load. And the battery is not being used at all. The battery is almost cut off at the moment. As soon as your load changes, the solar charge controller will change and will deliver more or less energy to your load but there's no current going into your battery usually and there's no current coming out of the battery usually. The charge controller only makes sure the battery voltage stays the same at 3.35 volts. Floating voltage. If we don't have any current flowing here, we've got exactly the same situation as in the Victron standard settings for lithium iron phosphate batteries. No current going in or out of the battery, the BMS can do its job. One battery cell a little bit higher, it gets discharged and we can actually have a result of discharging the battery because the BMS is not fighting any charging currents at the same time. People will now say, well, it is much harder to discharge a cell at 3.35 volts than at 3.55 volts because the higher voltage we are on the steeper area of the curve of course and every little discharge of the BMS results in a fairly quick voltage drop in your cells, right? So the result is far quicker up here than down here where the curve is actually flatter. And this is absolutely true. So balancing at 3.55 volts is more efficient than balancing at 3.35 volts because of the curve. <sighs> well, but you know, going back to Jason's comment, I hope it's here. Um, well, we are keeping the battery on 3.55 volts for two hours just to get the balancing done. Can I not get the same balancing done at 3.35 volt? So this is 0 0.2 volt lower so this is much softer and the degradation is far far less. I probably get a ton of comments now under this video and saying Andy why do you worry about it? 3.55 is still a lot lower than 3.65 and yeah that is true as well but then 
what I'm charging to him floating and balancing is even lower. So the battery should stay healthier, right? Because the voltage is lower. And I'm still charging the battery to 100%. So this is my, this is my very conservative settings now in the solar charge controllers and in the BMS. And I'm running this for three months now. I have fully charged the battery a couple of times in this time frame. And so far I must say it has worked. It seems to work. If we go quickly back here. So we are now at 92% state of charge, but I think my smart charge is not calibrated yet because of this 10 minute window. I haven't really tested yet and, and set up correctly. We can see we've got only five millivolt deviation up here. Five, four millivolt now. So all 16 cells are so close together all the time. And as you guys have said, the 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 cells will drift at low voltage or high voltage but in the middle they will most of the time they will stick together so at the moment i would say with these lower and conservative settings it is still working balancing is still working because when the battery is floating it has infinite time to balance well at least until the sun goes down right and then the solar charge controllers cannot supply power to the load anymore and the battery kicks in again and does the job yeah um yeah well this is what i wanted to show you this evening it is a bit theoretical this whole thing but as i said i've got this running for two or three months two and a half three months now and it seems to work and now you could say well at 3.35 volt floating voltage would i have said which is fairly low the drift of the cells may not be that high that you actually can recognize that there is an imbalance in the, in the pack. This only occurs at higher state of charges that you can see that, that some of the cells are, have a higher voltage than others. And this is true again, but at the end, does it matter? Does this cause any trouble? No, I don't think so. Because the cells are now at four millivolt deviation as long as they stick together from 3 volts to 3.4 volts and the deviation is so small, I don't... Should I care? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, guys, I don't know. What, what do you think about these conservative settings I have set now in the solar charge controller? Um, I'm not sure. Am I, am I missing something here? I'm looking forward to all your comments. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. And stay charged, stay safe, and we talk tomorrow again when I read all your comments about this video. And I promise I will do a follow-up video once the battery is fully charged. I, I try to get this on camera the next time it happens, and hopefully it happens tomorrow or Sunday, because on Monday I'm back to work, so there will be no chance to record anything. Okay guys, as always, I said this already. Okay, see you tomorrow then. Bye.